Hi, I'm Angela Evans, the 6th District Council Member of LFUCG, and I'm here today at the United Way with the President and CEO of the United Way, Mr. Bill Farmer, to discuss the programs and goals of the United Way for this year. So, Thank you, Mr. Farmer, for welcoming me and, and speaking, uh, being willing to speak with us today about the programs. Um, can you tell us what is going on at the United Way? Sure. Well, first of all, Welcome to the United Way, and this is your yeah. first inaugural program, and yeah. I am honored to be your first guest. Uh, regarding the United Way, uh, we're working on some amazing things here. Let me just tell you that our goal is to empower people to live their best lives, and mm -hmm. so we have been working very diligently over the last year or so on some new initiatives and projects that I'd love to chat with you about. Okay, and tell us what, what are the, the new initiatives and how are they different from what you've previously done in the in years past? Sure. Well, we've been in this community nearly a hundred years, a century, and we were known primarily as a fundraising organization. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what's happened over the past few years, and I suspect because of the recession, is that people were asking for even more accountability. People mm -hmm. wanted to know how much money we raised, but more importantly, how many lives we impacted. And so we've been working on initiatives to try to impact more and more people to move them out of long-term poverty to self-sufficiency. Okay, and I know you have a, a new program that you're uh, strongly promoting, the, the Big Bold Goal. The big, that is a that's mouthful. A, it, it is a mouthful to say. <laughs> and we really debated on that. Okay. The Big Bold Goal mm -hmm. is, a, is a derivative of, quite frankly, Big Blue Nation. Okay. One of the things that we know about Lexington and Central Kentucky is that rankings and ratings are very important to us. Just take a look at this last basketball season. And so what we've tried to do is incorporate our work into the culture of the region, the culture of Lexington, where we are focused on how we can become the number one learning community in America. Just as the basketball team was rated number one in America for basketball, we think that we ought to have a big initiative that we, Central Kentucky, but specifically Lexington, should be number one in learning. Okay, and so what does that look like for the community, being number one in learning? Well, what it really means is that, <clears throat> excuse me, that what we have to do is focus a lot on education. Mm -hmm. And we will, ha and we do have a lot of initiatives associated with education. But one of the things that we've learned is that before you can really start addressing education and learning issues, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that we've taken care of basic needs because if people are hungry or homeless, you can't really encourage them to learn at the highest level possible. Right. And if we don't have greater financial stability, often what happens is that poverty occurs because people make some decisions that they wish they could make differently. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we're doing is trying to help provide more and more information so people can make the right decisions at the very beginning. Okay. So we're working on basic services, financial stability, and then we have some major initiatives associated with education. Okay. And so how would, would the program um, help an adult versus a child? What, what are those how do those two services look differently sure. for? Well, in, as it relates to, say, for instance, our financial stability, mm -hmm. uh, we have a service called 211. It's a health and human services hotline. So if you're in trouble and you don't know where to turn, just call 211. Okay. So let's assume that you're underemployed or you're unemployed and you call 211. We actually fund agencies in our community that provide job training. We also can help a person get a checking account if they don't have one. We also, this past year, in fact, over the last five years, prepare taxes for people for the working poor. And we also provide a service called Back on Track, which provides an opportunity for people to gain and maintain an asset. So if you're an adult, there are a number of initiatives associated with financial stability that a person can take advantage of. Okay. And I would ask people who are watching this show to call 211 for more information. Okay. So, and what do the programs for children, you, you mentioned education, what, what's going on, um, specific programs in schools or just generally with different um, public service agencies? Or? Sure. Well, our partnering agencies, whether it's financial stability or education or any of our initiatives are very important. We have to have them. 
And one of the things about the Big Bowl goal is that this is a community challenge. It is not a United Way challenge. Okay. So as we talk about schools, let's just have a real serious, courageous kind of conversation about mm -hmm. them. First of all, we live in the 10th smartest place in the country to live in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. The census data indicates that over 40% of all adult residents have an associate's degree or greater. Yet 54%, over half of our children, are on free or reduced lunch. And the, mm -hmm. based on testing, test scores in Kentucky, the worst rated elementary school in the Commonwealth is in Lexington. And so we have some major issues that we have to address from a health and human services perspective. And so from an education perspective, what we're attempting to do is to focus more attention on how we can drive long-term poverty down by focusing on education. When we're discussing the Big Bowl goal, what the Big Bowl goal really is, is for our region is to reduce the number of struggling families in our community by 10,000 by the year 2020. So that's the whole nature of the Big Bowl goal and the things that we do. Okay, so when talking about the Big Bowl goal, how what what resources are you using and, and how can you know, viewers or anyone in Lexington who wants to help, how can um, can they help in that in reaching sure. that goal? Well, that's it, a lofty goal. It is a lofty <laughs> goal, but it goes back to the culture of this community. Mm -hmm. The lofty goal before was that the basketball team would be undefeated for the entire year. So mm -hmm. why can't we have a lofty goal as it relates to the education of our children? So I think that the biggest issue that we're, we're trying to do regarding uh, addressing this is that there are three things we need. We need time, we need talent, and we need treasure. We need people to volunteer. If a person would be willing to volunteer one hour per week in a school, that would be extremely helpful in helping a, a child. Talent, whatever you bring to the equation as to what you can do to help children in schools, mm -hmm. That's, that's important. Whether you're a truck driver or whether you have a PhD, that would be important. And the other would be your treasure, to be able to invest money in the United Way that we would then provide to organizations in the community that will help these education initiatives. Okay. You, you spoke about just an hour with a child in, in a school. Can, cause I, I, I wonder if people really understand how that one hour, how they can truly impact the life of a child. What, what would you say to that person that just thinks that just isn't enough to, to really impact a situation? And I think that once you experience that relationship with a child, it's extraordinary. I've been over to a number of schools and visited them. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that you develop a bond that if you, quite frankly, if you don't work with the child, that bond becomes broken. That the child, the student looks forward to having you there, it makes their day, and if you're not there, that there is a discernible difference in the way that the child responds in school. So it almost becomes like a surrogate grandparent or aunt or uncle, mm -hmm. and that you develop this kind of special relationship with the child. Okay, and I believe you have a video sure. that, that uh, expresses or shows shows how that's been done with just a regular volunteer. With a regular that. volunteer, mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, we have what we. Little Maya, who is a mm -hmm. great spokesperson, she's five years old, mm -hmm. and so she, we're going to share that with you now. Okay. If you want to reach the United Way, all you have to do is call or dial 211. So anyone who wants to talk with us about volunteering, if you want to offer uh, services, dial 211. If you have issues or concerns that you don't know how to solve, just dial 211, and we have operators standing by that can help. All right, thank you. Thank you, and again, I appreciate being on your first show. Oh, absolutely, it's a pleasure. And we do have a video for the United Way about the big, bold goal that uh, we're ready for you to take a look at right now. I like to play with my brother. And I like to play with my little kitchen. I like to paint. The most thing I like to do is learn and play with my friends at school. I like to learn my numbers. One plus one equals two. What's the production? She's taught me all my numbers. She tells me 
to uh, do my manners and she tells me to say thank you and please. No, thank you. Mommy says it's important to go to school. It matters that I take care of my brother and I'm always there for him. And my sister's always there for me and my brother. And mommy's there for us. There's no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't be here where I'm at, raising my kids the way that I, I can now without the help that I received. Um, I guess I was what you would call a statistic. I was, I was a teen mom and, you know, I, I grew up in poverty, um, raised by a single mother also, and it's just important for me kind of to break that cycle of both poverty and, you know, single motherhood that typically goes hand in hand with, you know, being in poverty. I knew school was what would help me, but I didn't know how to get through school, being a mother and really having no income. Um, so I just started seeking out programs and United Way, you know, partnered with like basically every program that I used to get through school. Um, and then I found the career that I wanted and I just, from there it was no turning back. Family, of course, and to love other people and to show help and love to people. The two things that people can't take from you is your self-respect and your education. You know, that's what I tell them a lot, that, you know, that's just really important that um, to love yourself and to, you can never have too much education. Fifty thousand families need our help in the bluegrass. Half of kids that go to school aren't ready for kindergarten. Two out of five high school grads aren't ready for life after graduation. Thirty-two thousand kids are living in poverty. Poverty. Marvity. 32,000 kids are living in part of me. Oh my God. I can't see it the right way. It's when kids don't have when they need to be happy. United Way has a big, bold goal. 10,000 families will be self-sufficient by 2020. We need the help because it matters. The partnerships that United Way um, has and the programs that, that they help provide financial assistance to are just huge in what they can do for families. Um, making families self-sufficient and never needing that help again, I mean, that's, that's huge and that's what I experienced, you know, there's thousands of families right here in Kentucky who are just working really hard to provide for their family and they just need a, just a little help just to make it so that they don't have to make hard decisions to either choose between paying a bill this month or buying groceries for their family. United is the way.